So I wanted to talk to you today about my washer, my uh, front load Kenmore Elite HE5T. It's not the steam model, but it is the front load high efficiency unit. And I've been noticing uh, if I let the washer sit for a couple days, sometimes there is a little bit of water in the bottom of the tub. Um, thought maybe we were having a, another problem, but I think there's a slow leak in the washer somewhere. I've just got to try to track it down. And what I've noticed is that there is water running uh, from the water inlet spout that normally runs into the tub. There's just a very fine trickle of water. Let me zoom in on that and show it to you. So here's where the water normally comes in. You can see after years of use, there's a little bit of a deposit there, soap and calcium and whatnot. But the problem that I'm seeing is, um, let me see if I can lock the tripod here and uh, zoom in. Uh, you can see a little trickle of water right there. Kind of tough to see, but even if I, uh, if I interrupt it, you can see it, it comes right back. If I wipe it out of the way, it just trickles right back into place there. Okay, so what I noticed is, is, as I pulled the soap dispenser out, you can completely take it out of the system by just releasing that little tab. You can set the soap dispenser out of the way there. So looking up into the uh, end of the soap dispenser here, uh, let me zoom out so you can see, I've got my camera facing right in here and I'm looking all the way back here. You can see where the water inlet tube is. And uh, if you look closely, you'll see that it is dripping just a little droplet, and I suspect probably on the water inlet valves, probably a little bit of calcium. We have fairly hard water where I live here. And uh, I think there's probably some calcium on the ceiling surface of the uh, water inlet valve. So uh, let's talk about how to replace that valve and how to take care of the situation. All right, so I've got the unit out where I can get behind it. I'm going to start by taking out the three bolts on the top here to hold the top lid in place. Also, now is a great time to uh, clean behind the units and under them. If you're places like mine, you'll find all sorts of hidden treasures down here. Make sure it's unplugged at this point before you start. I've got the three screws out of the back. Go ahead and just pull the lid back. Lift it straight up and off, and just set it out of the way. So I've determined that it is the water inlet solenoid, which you see here. Uh, if you look, this is where the uh, two water hoses connect, right from the back of the washer. And uh, what I did is I, uh, I disconnected the power cord, and um, I turned off both water supplies, waited for the hose to relieve any pressure. There was no drip, so I turned on just the cold I looked up in there, there was no drip, turned the cold back off, turned on the hot, and I could see the drip again. So I've determined it is the hot, and uh, it really can't be anything else. It, it just simply goes from the water supply through a water metering device that tells the unit how much water is going into the, uh, into the drum, into the tank, and then it simply goes into the soap dispenser unit right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get another uh, water valve solenoid assembly on order and when it comes in we'll go ahead and change it and see if that takes care of the problem. All right so I've got my new part here. Go ahead and take it out of the box. Looks pretty much like the original one that's on there right now. Let's talk about disassembling the uh, water system to gain access and removing the water valve. Okay, so make sure your water supply is turned off and go ahead and just release. I've got a rag under here to catch any drips. Go ahead and loosen both the hot and cold supplies. It's a good idea to have a trash can handy or some kind of receptacle because the hoses are going to want to leak a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go in here with some pliers and I'm gonna 
release these spring clamps. I'm going to try to slide them up on the hose a little ways here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect the connector for the water sensor unit. It just unplugs. Actually the whole reed switch came out with it. That's a magnetic wheel in there. And uh, I don't know if you can catch it on the camera, but this is a reed switch and every time the magnet rotates near it, it makes and breaks connection. Next I'm just going to set my rag on the wash tub here and just lightly twist to break free. And once I break it free, I can work, work it off, drain any water onto the rag I have right there. So I've got the water sensor unit completely loose from the soap dispenser. Next on the inside of the washer, I'm going to go ahead and release the two connectors for the water solenoids. So I've just released them. There's a tab on the top of each one. If you just lift the tab up slightly, the connectors will pull straight out. You really don't have to worry about connecting the wrong ones based on how they've zip tied the wires. One, it's very hard for it to reach uh, the hot one, so I, I don't think you'll really have a problem there. Or the cold one. The, the yellow one is the hot, the white one is the cold. Okay, now on the back of the unit I'm just going to take out one Torx screw. It's a T20. Now the valve assembly can be just slid over and pulled straight through the back. Okay, now I'm just going to take the uh, spring clamp. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move it up out of the way. Just going to break it free and easily rotate it out of here. Now I've got the old valve completely out. Okay, so I've got the new the new valve assembly here along with the uh, existing water meter. I'm just going to mate the two back together very carefully. I'm going to try to line them back up to the same position. And I'm just going to take my pliers. We'll put the clamp back on in the same place. Go ahead and just take it and put it back through the back. It kind of slides over to the left to lock into place. We'll go ahead and put that one screw back in it. It is into plastic, so don't over tighten it. Okay, so next we'll connect the soap dispenser tube to the water meter assembly. Don't forget the clamp on that one as well. Go ahead and put the reed switch back into it. Go ahead and reconnect the hot and the cold connectors to the solenoids. And I think we're done inside. We'll hook up the water lines and give it a test. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know, now's a quick time to uh, replace the washers and the hoses as well as do, as a, do a hose inspection. If your hoses are older than about five years old, they should be replaced. Um, I've run mine in some cases for over 10 and 15 years just by doing inspections. Uh, but you know what? You never know. A little pinhole can uh, definitely ruin your day with a flooded washroom. All right, so I'm giving it the, the test run right now. Uh, I have no clothes in it, but I do have the water turned on. I'm giving it the test. I'm going to let it fill up with water just for a moment here. 
it's normal to hear a little bit of popping because there is air in the lines right now. I've got it on the warm setting right now, so uh, I'm just going to let it run for just a minute. I'm going to reach in here and feel the water inlet tube and make sure it feels warm. That way I'll know if it's actually doing its job. It does feel warm. That tells me that the uh, hot and cold are mixing good. So uh, the next thing is just to check and see if I have any leakage. Uh, just a real quick note on uh, the operation of uh, valves and solenoids. Um, a solenoid is just simply a, a magnetic coil. It's got a plunger in the center of it. You can't see it, but it's in the center of the coil of magnetic wire. Uh, down inside each one of these you'll see two terminals. So if you're having a problem with you want your washer or whatever you're operating or working on uh, won't fill or won't operate with either hot or cold as this is. This is a dual solenoid water valve assembly. Uh, you could take your ohm meter and do a check and just check for continuity. Um, according to the uh, label on the side of the solenoid here, uh, it does run on 120 volts. Uh, the safest thing to do would be to do obviously an ohmmeter check in here. So let me show you that real quick. Okay, so I've got my ohmmeter here and I'm just going to very carefully try to hold this all still at one time and stick the probes in here. And you can see it's about 788 ohms. Um, I'm on the uh, or 2000 ohm scale here, so 0 0.788 kilo ohms, so 788 ohms. Uh, if you were getting, if you tested both of them and you saw a reading, uh, they're both identical, 788. If you tested both of them and you saw uh, a big difference, more than 5 or 10 percent, I would suspect, is one of them is being defective. And of course, the way to check and see if uh, you have a stuck valve like I did, or a leaky valve, is just to unplug it from the AC power supply, unplug it from the wall, and see if it continues to fill with water. So I hope you enjoyed my video on my uh, my Kenmore HE5T uh, front-loading high-efficiency washer that is only about four years old and already having problems with the water inlet valve. Uh, hopefully this will help you uh, keep yours running for many more years. Thank you for all the subscribers, all the comments, and thanks for watching.